Vale, eso iría bien. Eso iría bien. Eso iría bien. Some backgrounds. Uh, what is the subject? Quantum electron optics. I will talk about the motivation. Uh, I'll make an example of the recent proposal of electron flying qubits. And uh, what are the essential building blocks uh, for this study? Uh, among them, a single electron source is the most important thing. And I'll make an example of the Leviton, uh, also recently suggested and demonstrated. And I'll also, finally, I will show you an experiment experimental demonstration of two electron hungry brown trees experiments. And uh, for second part, I will uh, talk about my words about how to generate a single electron Gaussian wave packet. Uh, this will be based on the, some special uh, single electron source based on dynamic Compton dot. I'll talk why I'm interested in this special setup. I'm also uh, talk about uh, what are the detection methods. I mean, the Gaussian wave packet is in some sense special which has a minimum energy time uh, uncertainty product, uh, h power 2. And, uh, and lastly, uh, I'll talk uh, shortly uh, further studies towards how we can we uh, make further advancement, like two electron source, or how to uh, consider the interaction effects and the correlation generated among them. So uh, first, I will talk about the introduction. So, uh, as you know, quantum optics has been uh, used uh, for demonstrating fundamental quantum phenomena, and also it has been used extensively for quantum information. And uh, the typical example will be a double slit experiment. And uh, if you il illuminate light uh, to a double slit, uh, in the screen there will be interference uh, fringes. And the, the striking thing happens when you use a single electron, single particle source in the photon source instead of uh, just the continuous photon streams. And uh, uh, <coughs> then the single photons will either uh, pass through one side of slit or the other <coughs> side of slit. But uh, <coughs> strangely, uh, the accumulated intensity shows again the interference ranges. So in this sense, uh, single particle source is important to show the quantum phenomena. And uh, if we make also the source to emit uh, two particles which is entangled, then we can do uh, further uh, quantum information processing, like uh, uh, demonstration of uh, Bell's inequality, or the, uh, even the advanced techniques like uh, quantum cryptography or 
uh, any other quantum algorithms. And uh, is, uh, here the essential, essential building blocks of the quantum optics is that uh, the three things, uh, single photon source and uh, uh, the waveguide uh, protecting the electron propagation and also the beam speed. Uh, anyway, uh, if you have questions, uh, please interrupt any time. And uh, uh, the, my motivation, uh, I mean, I mean the, but there, there has been recent studies that uh, realizing these uh, building blocks using the electrons. And the motivation for that is that, uh, first of all, there is fundamental difference uh, between the photons <coughs> and electrons. I mean, for electrons, uh, they are interaction uh, by Coulomb equation, and also uh, the particle statistics are different. Uh, one is boson in photons, and one is fermion in electrons. And uh, if we can uh, realize this uh, building blocks using electrons, uh, we have advantage for quantum computation, because uh, it's uh, easily scalable uh, up to many qubits uh, if you use the well-developed uh, industry of uh, techniques, uh, I mean, a lot of applications. And uh, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll make an example. Uh, there recently, there is a proposal of the flying qubit, electron flying qubit. And uh, let's assume that we have already have uh, the three building blocks. So the yellow ones are single electrons. And the blue path is the beam splitter. And uh, this dash black line is the I mean, uh, it, blue one is the waveguide, and the black dash line is the beam splitter. And uh, the qubit uh, state 0 and 1 is made by the two paths, uh, upper path or lower path. And <coughs> this, <coughs> when, uh, and the single qubit operation can be done, uh, I mean, uh, in this region. So in this region, uh, let's say uh, I plot the wave function of electron in the transverse direction, and following when I'm following the motion of electron, then in here the wave function is localized to one side. But when electron beats uh, this in this region, in this region uh, the there is a tunnel barrier like this. So for electron. It feels the, the tunnel barrier uh, is lowered suddenly. And <clears throat> as a typical example of the current oscillation, because of this sudden change, the electron starts oscillation between left localized state and the right localized state. Yes. And this is basically can be used for single qubit operation. I mean, when the oscillation ends up in the left side, then the output state will be zero state. And the oscillation, if uh, oscillation ends up in on the right side, then the output state is one. So we can also we can tune uh, this by tuning the height of the barrier because the oscillation frequency <coughs> depends on the height of the barrier. So we can achieve a spin flip, uh, something like spin flip operation. And <coughs> two, two qubit uh, operation can be also done using the Coulomb interaction. So when we have uh, two qubits, A and B, and uh, <coughs> for that purpose, uh, we couple two waveguides uh, only in this region. There is no tunneling, but two passes are both close to each other. And then the, uh, when the, the two electrons are uh, in, in this side, they only have, have higher energy or flow energy by each C. And if the electron passes this reason, uh, only the qubit, two qubit state one zero is changed by some phase vector, where the phase vector is determined by the EC multiplied by the time uh, passing here. And this operation actually corresponds to the uh, control phase gate for the qubit operation. So uh, if we <coughs> have this uh, single qubit operation and qubit operations, uh, then the scaling up will be easy if we expand this kind of uh, <coughs> circuit structure uh, larger. So, 
So I, I talked about the motivation to realize that this uh, electron quantum optics, but uh, we need three ingredients. And the first in most in ingredient is single electron source. And realizing single electron source uh, is non-trivial. Uh, because uh, if you think of a novel electronic device, and uh, usually we make uh, electron transport by applying some bias voltage. And if you think of a uh, typical example of constant uh, bias voltage, then the electron current is generated. But we have a Fermi C in this novel wire. So we excite many electron of whole pair, which has many fluctuations. And uh, recently, uh, there has been a suggestion that we can use a time-dependent uh, voltage here. And uh, Levitov uh, and other authors suggested that if we use a uh, Lorentzian pulse, then uh, we can generate only one uh, electron and whole excitation. And this uh, single electron excitation is called the Leviton. And one thing I want to emphasize is that uh, including this uh, source, usually other single electron sources use such uh, dynamical control. And the uh, <coughs> uh, waveguide uh, is made usually by quantum edges. And uh, as you know, uh, if we have an uh, electron gas, uh, today to mention an electron gas here, and you, we apply the strong perpendicular magnetic field. And then uh, because of the uh, Lorentz force, electrons make cyclotron motions. And <coughs> uh, near the edges, uh, the cyclotron motions make this kind of skipping orbits. First, strong magnetic field, this radius of skipping orbits gets smaller. And uh, this kind of edge state becomes robust uh, to external perturbations. Uh, for example, if there is impurities, pot potential impurities, then the electrons just make a detour uh, maintaining these uh, small skipping orbits. In that sense, uh, we can prepare the robust waveguide. And so uh, here is the one experiment recently done. It's an example of Humphrey Brown twist effect using the two electrons. So this is the, the two-dimensional electron class. And uh, here, first, we have a single electron source. Then the single electron source can also emit two electrons. Then two electrons are emitted into the wave guide prepared by the quantum mode edge, the white line. And uh, this splitter is easily made by the potential barrier located here. So uh, in principle, we can make flying qubits. And uh, in this study, uh, what was interesting is that uh, if we uh, measure the probability distribution, in this partition event, I mean, in this two electron process, there is only three probabilities that uh, the two electrons are transmitted, or two electrons are reflected here, or uh, two electrons are split in the different path. And uh, in the experiment, they found that the measured probability distribution cannot be explained by the uh, uncorrelated event, uh, I mean, the joint probability distribution of the so this is the uh, demonstration of uh, the Coulomb interaction effect in electron quantum optics, uh, which is different from the uh, quantum optics. And I will talk about uh, my contributions uh, related to this subject. Uh, <coughs> So uh, my, my uh, main contribution is that we can generate a single electron Gaussian wave packet. And I'm speci especially interested uh, in the set of uh, single electron source uh, realized by dynamic quantum dots. And uh, here is the schematic mechanism of this device. So we form a dynamic quantum dot uh, in the two-dimensional electron gas. And by modulation of the potential barrier by time dependent gate voltage, uh, we first capture electron into this dynamical quantum dot, 
and then emit to another side of the reservoir. And uh, this setup is um, motivated uh, originally because uh, this device can generate uh, accurately a quantized current. I mean, uh, if we uh, repeat this process by frequency f, then the generated pump current is just the uh, number of uh, uh, captured electron n times uh, the charge E n times the pumping frequency. And uh, this has been demonstrated to uh, have small error because uh, in this small quantum dot, uh, the flow intuition energy is very large compared to other important energy scales such as temperature. Uh, for example, the Coulomb uh, energy is around 10 billion volts, where the temperature uh, corresponds to the energy scale of the uh, 0.01 billion volt. And <clears throat> and this uh, device also has a uh, some unique character compared to other uh, sources. The unique character is that it, this generates a uh, energetically very hot electron, uh, and it usually has a uh, 10 and uh, 100 electron volts uh, above the Fermi level, and this energy scale corresponds to 1,000 Kelvin, which is very hot. And uh, mm, compared to the other source that I showed you, the Leviton, the, this uh, electron excitation has very small energy scale compared to this, uh, as a uh, sub electron volt above the Fermi C. Because this hot electron is energetically separated from the Fermi C, uh, we can uh, effectively decouple this single electron from this Fermi C. But uh, there is also this advantage uh, that uh, using this device, it is hard to control the emitted wave function. For other sources like Leviton, uh, it is known that the generated wave function is Lorentzian. Uh, which is just determined by the Lorentzian pulse applied to this bias. And uh, but, but in this device, it is difficult to make a simple wave function because uh, first, uh, there is always non-analytic excitation when we change the potential barrier of density. As I showed you the example of the flying qubits, there can be always a current oscillation where we induce sudden change of the potential barrier. And also, uh, when the wave function uh, tunnels through the one, one side of the barrier, the wave function can be changed uh, in the form of when it's captured in the quantum dot. So, <clears throat> but uh, in my proposal, the two things can uh, make uh, a simple uh, wave packet generation in the form of Gaussian. That's because uh, we use strong magnetic field and engineered time dependent voltage. Uh, so we I oscillate the uh, one side of barrier in this time profile. First, I uh, rise the barrier slowly so that the single electron is captured into the quantum dot in the ground state. And uh, because of strong magnetic field, this ground state uh, is in the form of the Gaussian. And uh, I suddenly rise the entrance barrier. Then this time evolution happens. Because of the sudden rise of the potential barrier, there is current oscillation uh, because of the non elevated excitation. But uh, in this case, the strong magnetic field makes the current oscillation uh, to be a rotation. And during the rotation, uh, because of strong magnetic confinement, the uh, initial Gaussian wave shape is remained uh, rather than changing into uh, uncontrollable shapes. And uh, also using this spatial motion, uh, we can make the electron to overcome the barrier uh, without changing its shape. So the emitted wave packet becomes also the Gaussian. And <coughs> To make such a Gaussian wave packet, the spatial oscillation of the wave packet inside some cavity is important. 
and uh, with Kento Yamata in the entity in Japan, uh, we made we made demonstration of the measurement of this spatial oscillation. But in this case, uh, in usually in the uh, double structures of sub micron cavity, uh, this oscillation speed is very fast, like a few picoseconds, and a direct uh, measurement of this picosecond uh, dynamics is usually diff difficult in uh, our devices because uh, we have a bandwidth limit uh, for time dependent gate voltages, uh, like 10 gigahertz. But uh, we show that uh, using some dynamic resonance level, uh, we can detect these picosecond oscillations. So in this scheme, there is oscillation you know, of wake in the cavity, and uh, we prepare another resonance level uh, adjacent to this cavity. And we lower the uh, resonance level. Like this. Then, the, because of uh, the resonance level, this electron can escape when only the energy of this electron and the resonance level is aligned. Then, depending on the alignment time, depending on whether the packet is uh, far away from the resonance level or uh, whether it is close to the resonance level, there is current generated <coughs> or not. So using this sensitivity, we can measure the current oscillations like this. And we found that the actual period of oscillation is around 3 picoseconds here, 4 picoseconds. And I, I now uh, I'd like to talk about uh, those other detection schemes because, uh, as I showed you, uh, we can generate a Gaussian wave packet, and the Gaussian wave packet uh, is uh, some uh, <coughs> typical example in quantum mechanics that has a minimal uh, energy and time product, uncertainty products uh, determined by h power two. And uh, here I will show you the. the uh, of the energy distribution and the timing distribution are possible. So I will first talk about the how to value the energy distribution. So in this setup, uh, we pump generate a hot electron propagation and we prepare another, another uh, potential barrier as a detector. And we value the current through the detector. And depending on the height of the detect the barrier, uh, the current is generated or not generated because of uh, this reflection. So we should measure uh, the current through the barrier as a function of the barrier height. We have this uh, kind of curve. And at this onset of the current generation, we have information about uh, the mean energy of this electron. And by this width, we also have information about the energy uncertainty of this dimension. And uh, the energy resolution of this barrier is uh, better for sharply changing transmission probability to this barrier. So if the barrier is uh, thick, uh, then we have better resolution. And uh, this kind of hot electric spectroscopy uh, can be interesting. I mean, uh, because this is hot electron, it can be relaxed uh, by some processes. And this is an example. Uh, that hot electron uh, emits some phonons, uh, and the uh, electron loses energy. And be because we can measure the electron distribution, we can uh, have information about these relaxation processes. And uh, by working with a uh, group of uh, UK and uh, Clyde Embry in the Newcastle, uh, we found that uh, if we have a, a strong magnetic field, then this kind of phonon emission process is suppressed. And uh, that was because the property of the quantum ball edge and the localization uh, because of the magnetic confinement. So, uh, in this case, uh, we found that the phonon emission was suppressed because of the small transition amplitude. 
And this is good because uh, actually uh, we can use a quantum mode edge as a waveguide. Uh, I mean, the, the hot electron generated uh, can ma maintain the coherence. And uh, <coughs> also, the time measurement is possible. Uh, in this case, we use a dynamic potential barrier instead of static barrier. So, we raise the barrier uh, at certain timing. And also, again, measure the current through the detector. And depending on the timing, Uh, electron can transmit or reflect it. And if you measure the current as a function of the rise timing, you again has the uh, onset of the current. This onset is information about the arrival time, in arrival time at this position. And uh, this uh, width has information about the time uncertainty of the arrival time. And uh, this time resolution uh, becomes better for fast rising period. So in our proposal, we demonstrated that uh, the whole process from the generation of the Gaussian wave equipment to the detection using the time-dependent uh, Schrodinger uh, equation solver. And we demonstrated uh, actually the measured energy and time distribution correspond to the original uh, distributions. And the product of these uncertainty values was almost close to the h power of 2. We had some error. The error was just originated from the, uh, the finite pumping speed, uh, which is limited by experimental conditions. But I think uh, this error is small enough because uh, experimentalists never had measured uh, any close to this value. And uh, I would like to emphasize this, uh, the dynamical control is essential for this generation and also the detection. And uh, I'll just uh, say briefly about uh, my other interest that uh, if this kind of dynamical control can lead to more advanced detection, like quantum tomography. And actually, there has been a demonstration of quantum tomography using the Leviton. And uh, in this measurement, uh, they were inspired by the, the optical scheme. And this scheme, uh, we collide the uh, single photon generated by the source and some other state uh, generated by, uh, as a reference. And the correlation between the, after the collision uh, is determined by the, this overlap between the target state and the reference state. I mean, if you use photons, uh, the correlation will show a uh, bunching. And if you use the electrons, the correlation will show anti-bunching behavior. And uh, if we generate this reference state as uh, some proportion of some energy state and the another energy state, and this quantity has information about the off diagonal element of this target state in energy space. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, this final part, uh, I'll just uh, talk about my further studies, uh, which is in progress, about two electron processes. So first, uh, <coughs> we can use the, the dynamical part uh, as a true electron source. But uh, there has been no study that uh, how the interaction between the electrons uh, affect the emitted wave function. And, I, uh, and in this uh, source, you are raising the potential part with uh, some rate. And I think uh, depending on this rate, the emitted wave function will be different. And uh, my open question is that can we emit uh, an entangled pair in energy and time? Because we can measure the energy and time. And uh, because in optics, uh, there has been some demonstration that uh, 
if you make, uh, if you can make an uh, energy time entangled pair, you can show the there's equality uh, this energy and time. Sorry, what is uh, yeah. bundling energy and in time? Sorry. Which, what is the state? Is, uh, yeah, so. Is the zero and the one? Okay. Yeah, for example, uh, if you think, so it's, uh, I'm thinking of generalization of some discrete uh, uh, degree of freedom. For spin, I mean the table space here. So if one electron is in the uh, spin up state, the other electron is in the spin down state, and the opposite case. So there is a correlation of the spin degree freedom between the two electrons. And I, I'm also thinking of But this can be a equation of different energies. But uh, it, it will be entangled in the uh, energy. I mean, there is there is a correlation to energy, and uh, I'm not uh, familiar to this uh, continuous entanglement, entanglement in the continuous uh, degree of freedom. And I'd like to learn about uh, schemes in the quantum optics. And, uh, and this is actually uh, my pre preliminary results. Uh, of uh, this process. So there is initially two electrons in the quantum dot, and I pump this electron by rising the potential of quantum here. And the two electrons are being emitted uh, when they gain sufficient energy. And so this is the form of the wave function in the, in the space or time. And I plot it for different uh, pumping speeds. When the pumping speed is fast, the two electrons uh, are emitted uh, within the close distance. But when it's pumped slowly, the two electrons are separated within uh, some distance. And there is some transition condition. And uh, as I showed you for the example, uh, the two electron Humphrey bound twist effect can show non trivial uh, results due to the flow interactions. So the setup is like this uh, we inject the two electrons into the waveguide and split them by beam split time. And if you measure the current and the current uh, correlation, you can extract the property distributions for this partition event. And uh, the experiment have shown that the measured probability distribution cannot be explained by the joint probability. And I developed some uh, scattering theory uh, for two electrons. And the partition probability was corrected uh, by the energy exchange between the two electrons. And what I found that uh, that the tunneling time uh, in the barrier can play some role uh, for the correction to the partition probability. And uh, this tunneling time uh, can make correlation in partitioning processes. So, uh, yeah, in conclusion, uh, I've shown you the recent studies about electron quantum optics, and <clears throat> there could be interesting effects due to flow interaction and power exclusion of electron uh, instead of photons. And uh, the essential part of this development is the single electron source and some detection schemes. Both are enabled by the dynamical control. And the two electron processes need further studies. Uh, and it, it, I think it's interesting. Uh, thanks for your attention. Um, you said it can become an uncontrollable shape if you don't use the... Yeah.
shape and it control in the right way? What does an uncontrollable shape look like? Oh, so, so if uh, like I know what a gauge looks like, what's an uncontrollable shape? It's uh, made of many peaks instead of single Gaussian peak. Yes. Uh, let me find out if I have any figure. Oh, no, I, I didn't prepare figure. <laughs> And in this video of the two, yeah. you showed the video of the two, two electron process. Yeah. yeah, two electrons. Did you would you call that a controlled shape or an uncontrolled shape? Uh, I'm not sure because uh, <laughs> the two electrons are affecting each other. So yeah, they were not gauge them. I think they were not gauge when they left the area. Yeah. So maybe in this region, when when the pump is looked. This region, I think uh, it is just uh, two Gaussians, but in this region, <coughs> one electron is first emitted and the other electrons are emitted later. There is two peaks. In this region, I think it's uncontrolled. How important is the, the shape of the confinement? I mean, this is confined in yes. yes. So how important is Shape is square web or harmonic? Yeah, yeah. In the wide direction. Yeah. In the wide direction. And is this important for the propagation? I think uh, in the strong magnetic field condition, uh, it becomes less important. Yeah, because uh, always the magnetic length, small like 10 nanometer, is the most important scale. But uh, in the opposite case, uh, as you said, the confinement of potential profile will be important. Yeah. So in the, in the quantum optics, or when people try to make simple photon sources in quantum optics, yeah. they often, for example, use also quantum dots. But this, uh, in semiconductors, when you have a lower band gap material inside the larger band gap material, and then they just inject the current, and because it's a quantum dot, only a single electron can fill the state, and then oh. successively only a single photon can be admitted. Yeah. Couldn't one do the reverse process to, to get a single electron, have a high band gap material, yeah. and have light absorbed? Are there more expert people who use like, yeah. absorption of light to trigger single, single electrons? Yeah, I'm not sure about it. <laughs> so, has, so it's never like people don't use like uh, photons to be absorbed to be transformed into electrons. It's not done. Yeah, I think uh, the opposite case is done. Right? Yes, 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 but, yes, but not the reverse. conversion from the light to the electron. I think uh, that is. Yes, uh, in this study I always uh, perpendicular. Yes. Tilted. Uh, yeah, but I, I haven't considered that direction. I thought uh, the tilted magnetic field uh, will have, I think, uh, just trivial effects. I mean, this just a uh, gap. In the case of the screen, how would interaction? Ah, okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, I never considered that.
I finish something. Okay, but I have to the paper. So let's get the I was for making some things. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to have something about calling. Okay, nice.